Okay, I'm going to ask you one more time, Christy. Are we actually allowed to do this? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah? totally. They're super chill with it nowadays. Like, we love Valorant now. Yeah. Ke Kevin's got my back. I got your back. You're Just, vouching for me? Let's do the, let's do the Val show. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, in that case, hello, everyone, and welcome back to VCT EMEA. It is week four. I was hearing some lead music have for a second, a but we figured that out. <laughs> we have quick. a lot to talk about. We're coming to you live from Messe Berlin. Mm, Christy, messy, you know. messy, 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 messy. <laughs> yeah, honestly, look, we got a bunch of yeah. fantastic teams ready to play today. Two best of three on the docket. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, and Vitality, they have a really good chance of actually making play. For sure. Vitality have been looking good. I think top four in the horizon for them. At the same time, don't sleep on Koi. I know it's a rocky start what off the, one what, and three, but their the, season what, is definitely what, guys, not over guys, yet. What, what, what is going on? What, what are you what doing do you here? What is this? VCT? That's not the right oh, it's, it's Valorant. V VC what? VCT? No, 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 no. This is... Wait, Actually, you should ask hold on. Her. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you know, like, Carmine Core, right? Yeah, I do. Can you, can you help us figure out, like, what's going wrong? With the jewelist thing, they're screen. Not even in AC. Yeah. They're not even in AC. What no, are no, you guys no, doing? Guys, okay, let's let's change let's change the set. And what, what have you been doing again? Come on. I just no, he no, said Kevin we could do it. Totally he said we could do it. Guys, no. It's what is AC that? AC playoff starts right now. Oh. Add it. Come oh. on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No. Off you go. to the LEC 2023 Spring Playoffs live from Berlin, Germany. Tonight, BDS and Vitality will face off to make history and reach the first LEC final. Which team can keep the win streak going? I'm Laure and I'll be joined by Ender and Broxa. Ender, did you work for LEC today? No VCT, we're back to League of Legends for now. Are Look, you ready for to this? To prep, I just had some matcha this morning because surprise, we're green now, baby. Look at it. It's very green. Spring Please branding. don't Photoshop yeah. us into awkward situations. Please for don't. the uh, yeah, new colors, <laughs> playoffs, uh, of course. Happy to have you back on the desk as well. Broxa, let's talk about the bracket and what we've seen so far this weekend. This is the first best of five of spring playoffs today, but let's take, take, a, take a look on how teams go got there. Um, we lost two teams yesterday. Elimination. Any surprises so far in the bracket and, and how it played out, Ender, on your side? What do you think? Oh, uh, maybe have not left? so many surprises. I think, like, BDS Vitality being at the top, yeah. like, preseason is a little uh, uh, shocking. Maybe not quite so much Vitality. Like, they put together a really solid roster and there was a lot of hype around the top side. But, like, G2 being a uh, loser's bracket as well as Mad Lions, uh, that insane series against Fnatic, that was crazy. Yesterday we said goodbye goodbye to Astralis, we said goodbye to Koi as well, uh, one of the teams who made the top for the past three years. Broxa, any take on this and the results we had? I think the Astralis series versus Matt was a little bit surprising yeah. because Matt didn't look that dominant versus Fnatic, but, you know, they stepped up coming into yesterday and of course, you know, a lot of us would have expected a bit more out of Koi, but at the same time, it was a close series and, you know, it's G2, what can you really do? And yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll see them again uh, in summer, of course, but focusing on the spring playoffs we have on our hands right now, MSI is what's on the menu for today. Implications, both teams can only qualify to MSI if they win the spring split, which makes it hype, I would say. Yeah, yeah it definitely makes Love it us. hype. Of course, G2 already locked in, but uh, these two teams at the top, like one of them is making finals, which I think is already yeah. insanely hype. Uh, and then, you know, there's a world where if G2 were to fall, like it's just an absolute bloodbath at the top with a lot of new faces that we haven't seen near the top Definitely. for a long time. Uh, um, a tough road, honestly, on the lower bracket, back to back to back series to play for this team if they want to make it to the finals. But let's focus on the series we have today. Vitality on the first side, huge expectations coming from this lineup at first. Super team meeting these expectations maybe this time around with the addition of upset in Spring Broxa. 
Yeah, they were not too convincing in the yeah. win split, but now they're actually looking really solid. Of course, I think from a team strategy point of view, there's still a bit of work that can be done on their side, but they're improving for each week and the individual talent is there, so it's just a matter of time before they're going to start looking really, really good. I think even in winter split, like mm -hmm. expectations were very high for them. That oh, they definitely. sort of teetered out uh, of the group stage a little bit early on, a little earlier than expected. But like you said, ever since Upja joined, joined the team, it's like a completely different story. Like, mm -hmm. absolutely, I, I don't think anyone really has doubts about what this team can accomplish. And now a win today sets them in the finals. They can uh, watch the rest of the competition try to fight towards them, yeah. which is such a powerful position to be in. The first finals in the history of the organization. And on the side of BDS, we've talked about the redemption of a lot of players. And I have my eyes on Adam at first here. He made his first finals before with Fnatic, but things didn't go so well for him afterwards, dropping out, joining BDS, dropping out of the LEC team, joining the LFL again. He was saying at the beginning of the year that when he came back to the LEC, he felt that he humbled down. He felt like he was a new player, a new man, and it shows on the Rift as well. Yeah, Adam has, you know, showed off big time and, mm -hmm. you know, his redemption story has been pretty beautiful so far. Uh, I'm curious to see how the matchup is going to go today because playing against Photon is like more or less the, the ultimate test. And who knows, maybe he's going to, you know, pull out the good old Darius and shine today. Yeah, I mean, I think you have sort of the unanimous best top lane of the league in Photon on one side, and then Adam, who has probably the biggest glow up I've ever seen from an individual player, right? Like ever since he went down to the ERLs and then hearing him talk about how it just gave him even more motivation to fight his way back to the top. Like mm -hmm. from the get go back in winter, like he was just solo killing people in the top side, was still playing all of those, you know, pocket picks of his, the Olaf, the Darius, also working, you know, the, the meta stuff into the pool there as well. So I cannot say enough good things about this player. Yeah. And now he's the chance to make it back to another final. It's gonna be an insane matchup on the top end, of course, Crowny. Um, uh, Lebrov used to be on the Vitality. Um, they failed their last playoff run, but it's not they're not the same breed this time, I think, Roxa. No, I, I think, you know, again, the glow of we've seen mm -hmm. from these guys has been so impressive. And I think it's really cool looking at some of these players because you can see that it's not only about being a strong individual, it's about having a strong team and good team cohesion. Exactly. Because in some of the previous years, they were struggling, they were not looking too dominant. All of a sudden now, they've really found themselves in a situation they're comfortable with. And all of them are on teams where everyone sets each other up for success. And it's so good seeing them shine after a couple of rough years. And it's it's no shocker here that like number one mission today is qualify for finals. Yeah. But for this bot lane, it's also a grudge <laughs> coming back against Vitality, and I can't wait to see them play because Crowny in particular has just been freakish down in the bot side. Like, very strong laning there with LeBron, but also his team fighting, especially on the big scaling picks. He has just unlocked uh, a, a level of his gameplay that I don't think we've seen in years past. Which is going to be even more interesting facing off against upset uh, in the bot lane, but one of the huge parts of BDS's redemption arc has been their immaculate dragon setups. GB, run us through what they've been doing in the group stage so far. And I will. Thank you very much, Law. Um, as you can already see on this full screen here, when you look at the numbers, uh, BDS have been quite good at taking Drakes. Uh, how good? Well, their Drake percentage so far in the LEC Spring group stage is 100%. Their Drakes is 16 to 0. Their soul percentage is 100%. And here's come the big part. The average soul time is 24.30 seconds. That's quite insane. Uh, and do not worry about that Drake right there. It is completely safe and harmless. It is a Chemtech Drake after all. But let's go into some of the setups we also have with the Drakes. Because there's two things we need to pay attention to with this setup of BDS Drakes. The first thing is just the pre-game planning. This is around one minute before the Drake is actually spawning. Laprov is priming vision control around the area. And you can see it right now. Vision control in the bushes. As we pause it, vision control in the bush. And once again, Vision. And then Shio's actually going to be making his way down here as well. And as we play out the clip, you can once again see that what BDS does so effectively with the pressure that Shio also gives them is that it allows the bot lane to get pressure. 
And now, once again, they're still playing around with the vision. Exakick and DOS have no way of knowing if they're actually on the Drake or if they're waiting in the bush. Well, Newsflash, they were waiting in the bush, so they get the flash and kill on Exakick and then can move back on the Drake afterwards. This is some of the pre-game planning once again, where BDS gets all the information and they get to dictate the pace of the game. This is a completely different game. Again, you can see it four minutes into the game, the planning has already begun. While Shio is counter jungling, gets the ward on the Raptor bush, and with the pressure that Laprov is also able to apply, they're actually gonna roam into the mid lane. Now they're gonna get no kill here, but they're gonna get the pressure, and the pressure is the big thing. Because this now allows them with the mid lane pressure, with the information that no one is coming through here, that Laprov can get even more vision. And he continues to do so. He's gonna move into the red side quadrant. He's gonna get a ward on the red buff. And now there's priority in mid lane. There was priority on bot side. And Shio can once again just start up the Drake once he came off reset after the dive because they have all the information that they actually need. Now here comes the second thing that BDS does well because it's not just primitive planning with the vision. It's the fact that Adam is willing to move around. You can see on the top side right now, Kennen's still up here, still pushing in. Adam has teleport. He's just gonna, instead of TPing like you no longer can do before 14 minutes into the game, he's just gonna move himself in here. And while Koi initially in this game had the setup, had the priority around Drake, all of a sudden they have to forfeit it. They can't TP in their cannon, and Crowny and the rest of BDS picks up another Drake. What's Adam gonna do? Well, he's just finally gonna use that teleport and not miss a single creep on the top side. It's this reverse engineering in terms of how do I use my TP to be active and how do I use my TP at the exit of a play to actually go back and not lose anything. In this instance again, Adam is on the move first. He came off of reset, immediately goes straight, not moving up towards the top side to pick if off the wave that Irrelevant has just pushed in. So they're sacrificing minion waves to make sure that once again, they can fight back with the vision. They're once again through Adam getting a man advantage. So despite the fact that SK was first on the Drake, BDS is now reclaiming it. And because they're reclaiming it, they get to dictate the pace of the fight that might come here. Yeah, it's unlucky. Adam might get off guard, caught off guard there a little bit, forced to use the ultimate. But as soon as the team fight breaks out, little bit of an in from Dust, but they still have all the vision around it. And they can just continue by getting the Drake, by picking up the team fights. And once again, these were the two two things that you need to be worried about when you're playing up against BDS. Preemptive Drake planning, when they use the one minute before Drake spawns to set up vision already aggressively in the enemy's jungle, and when they're utilizing Adam to for forfeit waves, and then actually just join the rest of the team to pick up these objectives. And now you're joining the rest of the yeah. team. That's yeah. crazy. We call that shifting. <laughs> oh, nice. Amazing presentation, GB. But you know what's better, even better than dragons? You. No, you, and you, and you, Dragon's Rage. That's what I was going here. And Proxa, I know you tweeted at Bo today asking for his Lee Sin to come back this week. He made some shiny and sh shiny, shaky play, let's say, last week that you can run us through, of course. Yeah, I hope uh, I'm going to get a chance to analyze some Lee Sin mm -hmm. today. Of course, we can kick off right here with two clips from Bo. In fact, we have his pro view uh, from last week, and I'm looking for forward to taking you through it. So, All right. It's against the Stralis. He's doing red buff, level three. See Sin Sao coming towards his jungle. Bursts down the red buff as soon as possible. And now he's going to stand ready for 1-1-3 one, one, to appear. Starts hitting him immediately. We can see the Sonic Wave is going to be up in just a moment. Pops is here. 1-1-3 one, one, tries to flash away. Doesn't work. Bow flashes out. Drop to 15 health. But because he flashed out of vision, 1-1-3 one, one, couldn't do anything. Easy kill. Now, 4v4 scenarios. Both AD carries are unable to join. Fight breaks out, Kaiser buys a lot of time with stopwatch, but look at Bo, look at this man. He goes in and he goes big. And just like that, huge fight for Vitality. Now, he finishes the last man, takes down Silas, but while this may have looked very impressive, there was a little something for us to look at. Now, let's see here. Bo's W is up. He jumps in in just a moment, onto 1-1-3, one, one, takes him down, and here, he can hop down with a safeguard below them. Three man kick, easiest angle of his life. Doesn't look for it. And we can continue the play once again. Keep in mind his W is available. He could even safeguard Photon, help his Jax, keep him alive. Does none of the two at the end of the day. After having W off for nine seconds, uses it on himself and doesn't help his teammate. Of course, if we look at the stats, they're very impressive from Bo. But I have to say, as a Lee Sin player myself, I think it's very, very important to help the team 
And I also think it's worth noting that if this guy, who's so good, mm -hmm. a Chinese jungler, makes mistakes like this one, leaving his teammate out to dry, I don't know if there's any hope for the rest of us. Oh, no. It's doomed. <laughs> hey, but like, I, I, I do think you're you're underestimating one key facet, and that's uh, the Lee Sin W doesn't actually do damage. Um, yeah. So I don't actually know if it's it's valuable to cast it ever. Playing for this. I mean, that's what I learned from yeah. Bo right there. Is just you so, land so your Qs and you're chilling. He lets his teammate die, picks up to kill himself. Maybe one. Yeah, because if he keeps yeah. Photon alive, then Photon's gonna steal ah, his kill. I see. It just it just makes sense. Like I, I should try that out myself actually. Uh. Classic jungle uh, behavior. Let's stay on the jungle matchup here, but look on the side of Shio, who's been instrumental in BDS's early game. I feel um, when you look at Vitality, they're really dependent on whether Bo and Perks are gonna are gonna perform. But uh, the same case can be made for BDS, I feel, and whether Shio is going to find these opportunities in the first minutes of the game. I think the thing that has really impressed me out of Shio this split compared to last is he's been very effective in counter ganks, right? Yeah. I think he doesn't go for a lot of, like, high-risk plays. Uh, he, he does look for ganks himself from, from time to time. That's definitely in his wheelhouse. But I think he's very often oh, wow. showing up around his vulnerable lanes and protecting them. Uh, and, and I just have loved to see that. So I think especially matching up against Bo today, that's something you're going to have to be on guard with, especially if Bo's playing a more aggressive ganking jungler. Yeah, I think what's really interesting is the fact that both junglers arguably came of their best series they ever had in the mm -hmm. LEC as yeah. well. And while also their year is quite short, they're at the peak of the career in the LEC right now. And I think both of them, either one is going to have to go down or fall today. They've both been aggressive. Shio has loved counter jungling as well. It's been one of the foundations of BDS in the early game as well, the way he can take charge. So I think the jungle matchup is something you have to focus on going into this series. And look at him. Doing push-ups, exercising before <laughs> the game. You think Bo does push-ups right now? I hope so, otherwise it's going to be a rough one. Warming, warming up before going uh, on to the Rift. I want to focus on the bot matchup as well. We've talked about uh, upset joining in for Vitality and giving a, a bit of fresh air in this Vitality lineup. But Crowny on the other side also has been one of the best performing heady carries we had in spring. 100%. I think uh, the thing that I want to highlight every single time is his positioning within team fights. It's very mm -hmm. rare he's putting himself in positions where he can get caught out by key abilities. If he is, he's dodging away from the proper spells and getting involved. Yeah, and just the, this is one, of course, of many where he does that. This is the Pensing Kill boat. There yep. was also the other time around the Drake where he legit just flashed into the enemy team. It's about knowing when he can go in that makes Crowny so scary. And that's also the other side of the matchup today with Offset. I think one of the things that are great about Offset is it's, it's not only about the in-game stuff, it's about his communication, his willingness to, to work with his team. And this is something that Vitality spoke about in spring, that they had a lot of communication problems, and they were not really on the same page. We haven't heard them talk about it a single time really since Opposite joined. Mm -hmm. And I think what he's doing in terms of comms is so huge and a big part of why they're playing so well. Yeah, and I think one thing to keep in mind with both the junglers and bot lanes involved is I think the last series, both teams in different games tried to sort of like split the map around bot lane, sort of deny the enemy bot lane from farming underneath their own tower. Mm -hmm. So I'm specifically looking at that, especially if we see something like the Drake even come through for upset. If we have these like very aggressive, strong lane dominant champions on the bottom side, you better believe these junglers are going to have some kind of idea. Even Vitality showing it from level one in their first game, invading, splitting the map after that. That's going to be on my mind for sure. I, when I look at this matchup, I, I legit don't know who is going to take it. For me, BDS exceeded expectations. They rose into becoming one of the best teams we have in the LEC right now. Vitality are finally performing to the expectations we had coming from this lineup at the beginning of the year. So guys, I, I will let you predict who do you think is going to win today. Let's start with you, Broxa. Well, I think if we look at bot side and jungle, it's really close. I think mid and top on yeah. both sides are pretty solid as well. But I'm going to favor Photon and perks in this case because i think they're more well-rounded uh, you know they don't have any weaknesses really mm -hmm. and i think especially early game they can make a big difference and take over and there you're next uh, i'm also i'm also on a on a 3-1 hype train for and uh, for ender <laughs> jesus <laughs> we <all> three <laughs> <laughs> sure. for vitality <laughs> vitality there we go uh, but you know if vitality win then i am by default winning too cuz i predicted them it's all part of the plan uh, ultimately i just i think bo just came off of a absolutely sick series and i think mm -hmm. that there is going to be a heavy focus around the bot side like yeah top lane is really exciting great players up there but i favor photon in the isolated match matchup, uh, barring some of the more unique picks out of Adam, and I think that, that Bo's going to devastate bot lane with some perks rooms. Free one way tell the club, let's GB, go. what do you have? Well, I'm going to go against them all, throw a little spanner into the ah, world, thank you. and I'm going to follow the 3-1, but I'm going to go for the BDS instead, and you know, I'm confident, I'm feeling it today, I've actually made a bet 
with Ye Broxa. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, remind me, Broxa, what is it that's going to happen if I win today? So when the day is over on the post-game lobby, because I win, because Vitality wins, you can see Gold Ball appear as a clown. Yeah, that's right. But I'm when BDS wins and we have a PGL, you're going to see Broxa with the clown makeup after in PGL, so... And if then... BDS win, I'll give you a high five. Um, yeah. How about that? If Vitality so wins, boring. I'll give you a high five also. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's wow. risky bet here. <laughs> Let's impressive. find out which team will achieve the first ever LEC Finals appearance today as Team BDS and Vitality clash in our LG Ultra Gear match of the week. Oh, I love it. I told you. <laughs> When we screamed in December, I already knew we were good enough to be among the top of the league. It was just everyone else that was doubting. Some of them who didn't believe in me are obviously messaging me now, right, and congratulating. BDS cementing themselves in the LEC as one of the teams to beat, as they will smack down on SK. They have a really solid foundation that they built over the split. It's definitely a team that you shouldn't take too lightly. I think their support, Labrov, has been playing really well this split. But overall, I think all of them are having a good split and everyone is doing their part. The stakes will be there for the finals, for a spot with the MSI. It's where the stakes will come. Before that, we'll just treat this as a best of five. Now it's just about us really going the last two steps and really showing that we are the best team.